Uh, yeah, I think they have. Uh, I think a goodly many of them, when I first started to teach, were um, generous and courteous and very polite. And I think that over the years, the floodgates have opened, shall we say, and um, a little less of the courteousness and the politeness has, has gone by the wayside. Um, um, but you know, on the whole, I think that, um, that the tone and perhaps the, the sense of entitlement um, allows the students sometimes to be rude, maybe rightly so, I don't know, um, but I never uh, thought that that was a right. I think you, you, you earn whatever it was, and you certainly have to earn courteousness and politeness, so. Well, I, I think that there are those times when the person um, feels entitled, you know, and, and uh, I, I can remember somebody came into my office and said, and banged on my desk. <laughs> At which point I dismissed them you s at once, you know, but, but I just thought there's a point at which you, you can try and entertain what the kid is suggesting to you and then there are other times when uh, they've stepped over the line and, and uh, you must ask them to, to leave and, uh, and if they don't leave, then you leave. Um, but, but the conversation comes uh, to a screeching halt, I think, and that's fine. Uh, there was once somebody uh, with an assignment did something that I thought was not called for. Um, and uh, he was supposed to have written this poem out, and I think what he, he did, the exercise was simply to write six sentences, and he objected to my wanting him to just write six simple sentences. Um, so when he went away, he wrote really uh, a very, shall we say, explicit poem. <laughs> and, and as my mother would have said, I didn't make it any better or any worse. I printed it up and, and I passed them all out. And uh, we came to that particular poem and uh, said, please to read it. And he read it. And then I said, then tell me now, what do you mean by this? <laughs> and of course, everybody in the class breathed in, you know, and they wondered <gasps> what, what's going to happen next. And uh, he said something, and I said, you may not address me in such tones. And so I am going to excommunicate you from this class. And you may go and see the dean, and after the dean, the president. And if you don't find any satisfaction at either one of those places, uh, I would go and see God. But you may not come back. And that was the end of it. And uh, he never came back. So I don't know if the, the deans thought I was being outrageous, but I saw it. You know, I, my uh, Indian colleague said uh, always, you have to nip those kinds of crises uh, in the bud with an iron hand. And so I thought that's what I did. I just nipped it uh, with an iron hand right away. And I didn't have any more problems. And my sense was that you, you could write anything that you wanted to, but you could not abuse the other students in the class. You could not abuse me or anybody else that we knew about. But, but I, at the same time, I wanted them to feel free and to write whatever the muse uh, said you should write. And there were no restrictions. I don't think there 
any bad words. They may be words which are used badly. And, and that's a slight distinction, but I think it's a good one. So uh, I never uh, ever encountered <laughs> any more problems like that. Uh, no, I, you know, I look back on the teaching career and I probably didn't lose control until the end. But I, by that time, was thinking people were much more sophisticated uh, than they were. Uh, I think that there's maybe a little less of that now with the students that I ended up with. That as, as I taught over the 30 years, uh, they became less sophisticated, uh, though not all of them. There's still that percentage who were hard workers, who knew what they wanted to do and came in, did it, and then graduated and went on with their lives. Uh, there were that percentage of people who didn't know, but finally discovered it and then did it. And, and, and then there are those who some fall by the wayside because they don't know what they want to do and they never do find it out until maybe years after you've taught them. Uh, I can remember one teaching, one student as I was teaching composition and uh, I was on an airplane flying back from a reading from somewhere and the two gentlemen in front of me said, this is how we're going to conduct the interview. We're going to place him in a room and we're going to have him uh, phone somebody and answer the phone and we're going to see how he handles the language. And if he speaks in clear sentences, and I thought, oh my goodness, where's my tape recorder? I don't have my tape recorder. But I remembered the whole conversation. So I went back and I said, uh, you know, here's this person who is going to give you a job for, shall we say, $50,000 a year. And he's asking you to uh, demonstrate how well you can use the English language. I said, this is a marvelous thing that I'm telling you daily as you write your essays, to be very clear and precise. And I finished telling the story, and someone leans over to his neighbor friend and says, uh, do you suppose that that, was, that really happened? Was that true? And the kid says, oh no, it was probably an apocryphal story that he's always making up apocryphal stories. <laughs> and I overheard them and I thought, you know, this would really happen. This is real. This is genuine. And I'm trying to alert them so that they will be prepared. And uh, they thought it was an apocryphal story. So I, I just amused myself with it and, and let go of it. But what do you remember <clears throat> about your very first Teaching experiences at, at UD. What were those like? Can you think of any particular? <laughs> well, experience? I thought of one. Yeah. Uh, um, at least the lady now is that was involved in it was deceased. Um, Marie Malord was her name, and I was teaching a summer course in drama. It was my first summer teaching course, and I thought things were going along very well, and uh, I come to the uh, final paper and she marches to the desk and says, I think that uh, there's been some cheating and plagiarism going on with two of the people in the class. And I said, oh no, surely not. And she said, yes it is. And finally um, she got the one man to come up. He told me that uh, he had done this paper and had shared the information with another student, but the student had uh, plagiarized all the shared information and um, should not be allowed to use it. So I said, fine, I would investigate it. In the meantime, uh, Marie Malord says, uh, and if he doesn't um, tear up the papers, I would take my pencil and stab him in the eyes. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, you mustn't do that. You mustn't, you, you mustn't do that. Uh, I will take care of it. 
and finally we convinced the young man that he had to rewrite his paper and uh, and let the other paper go and and that solved the whole situation but uh the the lady at, at that point was really very incensed and says I would take my pencil and stab him in the eye so he would never see another thing I wrote. Uh, and I thought, oh, you know, this is kind of uh, touch and go. And so, but, but it all turned out to be okay. That was the first thing I remember about, te about teaching one here. Of drama, I yeah, guess. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, so. That was one of your early experiences. That was one of the early ones. I, I, <laughs> what did I, you learn from that if you were to pass along? some insight that you gained from that well, you, experience. Yeah, I try to tell, tell my students, or well, I told them, I would much prefer that they had written a very bad paper, that they had done all the work themselves, rather than to uh, uh, plagiarize uh, a paper and write it and pawn it off as their own. Because my, my very first uh, teaching job in uh, Michigan at Aquinas College. Uh, that happened to me. The kid uh, had purchased a paper and had been assured that this paper would make it past the teacher because the paper had made it past almost everybody else in the university, in the college. And uh, lo and behold, as I tell the story now, uh, I, be, I come along, and I had spent a whole year studying Chaucer. So he hands in a paper, and it's about the knight's tale. And I'm reading this paper, and the light bulb comes on, and it says, where have you read this before? And I think, oh, I can't remember. But I go upstairs to the library, and I go into the Chaucer section, and I reach up, and my hand pulls down this book, and I open it up, and there is this paper, word for word, you know, and <laughs> I am, I'm appalled, I, you know, and, and the poor kid, he was struggling. He could have gotten a C out of my course, but he wanted an A. So, uh, in those days, I graded on a tape recorder. So I said, oh, Mr. XYZ, isn't this remarkable that you are now writing very, very clear and perceptive sentences? Uh, let me read you another passage from another source. And I read him the source out of the book, and then read the source out of his paper. And he says, isn't it strange that you should come up exactly with the same sentences and the same paragraphs that this book, well, I am going to give the book an A and you an F. Well, he was supposed to listen to the tape in his room alone, but instead, because he had purchased this, he wanted to show whether or not it had gotten past me. So all the boys on the floor came and, uh, and they told me that I had devastated him in front of all of his peers and I said, well, what do you think happened to me when I discovered that he had plagiarized the whole paper? Not a single word, and it belonged to him. And so it serves him right if he was embarrassed in front of all of his friends. So that was the first time. So I uh, would tell my students, I really am pretty smart, and I've read an awful lot, uh, and I can tell when it's your prose as opposed to a professional who has written something. Uh, you, you have a fingerprint and it's there and I can identify it. So after that I don't think I had too many more play, plagiarized papers so that was a good, good thing. So. Well, my, part of my, my job I thought was simply to try and impart as much knowledge and information as I could. Also to get the student, I think, just to, uh, if the kid was smart, uh, to get him or her to push those boundaries and to see where 
their sense of intelligence could take them and always to be, shall we say, pushing the envelope. Um, if it was on the side of talent in acting or in creative writing, that was to get them to open up and see how many more opportunities could be available to them and how they could uh, entice the, uh, shall we say, the muse to uh, come and give them many more ideas. And if they worked at it hard enough, uh, they learned a sense of endurance, but they also learned how to persevere. Because I think if you're going to um, be a professional writer, um, the one thing you have to have is uh, endurance, staying power, and you have to have a sense of perseverance. You have to persevere right to the end to see, because you don't know when that moment is going to uh, bring you the Pulitzer Prize. You may never, but, but you have to keep writing in order to, to get to that point. Mm -hmm.